Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Day Spring Discussions. This is a show where we talk about movies, TV, sci-fi, fantasy, comic books. If you geek out about it, we're going to talk about it. I am your host, Sean McGahey, and joining me today is the Black Widow herself, Miss Lisa Locke McGahey. Okay, uh, I don't know if the Black Widow is the right description, but... Well, that's um, true. I think you're more of a Sharon Carter, if anything. Maybe. But anyway. Alright guys, so normally we go through a bunch of uh, topics that came out last week... And uh, we discuss and give our opinions on them and whatnot. But I think we all know what we want to talk about. Uh, it's the big news of the weekend. Captain America Civil War came out this last week. Uh, the movie I've been anticipating since I heard that they were coming out with Civil War. So for several years now. It's the number one movie I wanted to see this year. Lisa and I both went out and saw it twice already mm -hmm. uh we always, i always like to go see a movie twice because the first time i had kind of my expectations of it and then the second time i can see you know put those expectation expectations aside and get a clearer view of uh you know judging the film more neutral i guess you could say well the second time through you are stop you're able to look past the spectacle the first time through, you're just sitting back and enjoying the big picture the second time through you can actually look at the details and do a little bit better analysis true, true, of the true. story and true, true. that kind of stuff. That is true, exactly. So that's why I always try to, you know, see a film at least twice or a big movie twice before I talk about it. Now, I did have a couple topics uh, that came out last week that I wanted to share, but let's be honest, people. We're just going to spend the whole time talking about Civil War. So I figured we might as well just throw those notes out and just get on with it. But there's one little small little thing I would like to discuss real quickly before we get into Civil War, which is... Deadline has reported that the casting of the young Han Solo for the Star Wars anthology film um, has been cast, or the, the search is over, and that Hail Caesar actor Alden Erich, I think I never say his name right. I have right. no idea how you say I it. I never say his name, but anyway, he has officially been cast as Han Solo. Uh, now, Disney and Lucasfilm, I don't think, have yet to come out and announce it, but Deadline and other sources um, have been saying this, and everyone's kind of buying in at this point. So I believe it. Um, some people, the fan favorite was Taron Egerton from Kingsman. But if you go back several months in this podcast, and they were kind of narrowing down the top five actors, uh, I was in favor of Olden. So I would just like to say, <laughs> I don't get a lot of right. I don't get a lot of right, okay? So I got to take advantage of this one where my pick was the pick. So I just wanted to gloat a little. Okay. Can I gloat? Do you need a pat on the back? Go ahead, pat me on the back. Yay! I feel better now. Okay, so all right, I just want to get it out there. But um, Lisa, I know you're not really familiar with the actor. I know you haven't seen Hell Caesar. I've not just, seen him in anything. Yeah, so you really have nothing to judge him by. But yeah. um, I mean, how do, you're okay with the way he looks? Yeah, or? I, I don't actually. I don't even know what he looks like. Well, there you go. See, so she knows I, nothing. I know nothing about. Well, him. I mean, would you would you think? You know, Taron Egerton would have been a better choice, or well, I don't know. I don't really have a comparison for that. She I think Taron no Egerton would have been a fine all. choice, but I don't know. I don't. I don't know enough about this guy yet to have an opinion. Okay, so sounds good. But yeah, that's just a little piece of news I just want to throw out there, um, saying that I was right and everyone else was wrong. So Stop surely it. you're not the only person no. that thought. Well, it was the be reason I didn't. I, everyone else is wrong. I wasn't going to say anything, but then I was lost, listening to the John Campia podcast this morning and he was talking about how well oh, a month and a half ago you know i chose this guy too and i'm like whoa 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 two or three months ago i chose this guy okay so whatever i was ahead of the curve for everyone so suck it okay that's my one little thing now we can move on guys captain america civil war came out this is the 13th film i believe 14th film in the marvel cinematic universe uh, directed by Joe and Anthony Russo, who directed Captain America The Winter Soldier, and who will be directing the next two Avengers films, which we just learned are no longer going to be titled Infinity War Part 1 and Part 2. Uh, the Russo brothers came out and said they're two di totally different films, so it would be unfair to call them Part 1 and Part 2, so they're going to be two different titles, um, you know, not a, not parts of anything, really, is what it is, So, which we're fine with. So it came out in the film... A uh, huge critical buzz, a uh, huge fan buzz. I think it's sitting here like a 90% uh, on Rotten Tomatoes right now for both critics and fan rating. Made $180 million at the box office. I think it's going to do well in its second week because I, was, I looked at this next weekend. There's really no competition oh, I don't this know. I week. I, I mean, 
Uh, this weekend, I really see anything that's going to, you know, go up against it. The next weekend, you have the one that I want to see is The Nice Guys comes out in two weeks. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then, of course, after that, you have X-Men. So, I think it's, honestly, I think it's going to be number one at the box office until X-Men comes along, really. Probably. I'm definitely going to see it one more time, too. I have okay. to because I went and saw Batman v Superman twice in theaters. And I really didn't like that movie. But I like Civil War. So it has to be, just to be fair, just to give Civil War that little boost, I have to go see it more than I've seen Batman v Superman. I think it sounds logical, in my opinion. All right. So, but anyway, um, so Civil War, please say that. I really enjoyed the film. Um, Marvel always does it best with their blend of action and humor. Uh, just a very, very entertaining film. Some people say the film was a little too long, with two and a half hours. I don't think so. I think there's a lot in the film. Now, don't get me wrong, there are a couple flaws in the film. Uh, most of the reviews I've read have been pretty positive. There's a few negative ones that I've read, uh, but those are few and far between. Just more like kind of plot hole kind of things, which uh, as we go through uh, this podcast, I'd like to kind of address some of those holes. And I mean, the film was far from perfect, but it was, no, exactly. it was very entertaining. Could, exactly. Some, some of the, the, the negatives I've heard are reasonable, sets, reasonable yeah. and some of them are just flat out ridiculous. So, as we go through, I'll try to bring some of those up and maybe see if we can fill some of those holes with logic on them. But overall, great film. Uh, what I want to do is go through, uh, just kind of, honestly, character by character, and kind of see their impact in the film, how well we think they did in the film, and where we think they're going from there. But before that, I just want to get, uh, Lisa, your general thoughts on the film, uh, maybe some highlights for you, uh, maybe some things you really loved about the film, maybe a few things you didn't like. Um, I mean, overall, I thought it was very entertaining. I, I enjoyed it. I was not bored. Um, I didn't feel like it was too long. I thought there was a lot of really, really great action sequences um, that just, you know, made it very entertaining. I was, I was entertained by the film. I left the film happy that I had seen it, uh -huh. which I think is kind of what the movie-going experience is about. It's supposed to be about, yeah. You're supposed yeah. to be entertained. Yeah, so I, I was entertained. So... Um, Ahead, I mean, I, I really, I enjoyed, I, mean, I thought a lot, of, I thought all the characters really did a fairly good job. Um, I mean, I, I enjoyed, I think it really in this one, I really liked what they did with Falcon in this one. I felt like he kind of got, okay, okay. the first time he really got some. He didn't look just like a punk. Yeah, like I feel like they made his costume <laughs> they, really they badass it, yeah, this time. Yeah, he got some it. really cool things. I thought he got a lot more kind of speaking parts almost mm -hmm. than he had before. Like uh -huh. I felt like he was a real part of the team now. Uh-huh. Um, uh -huh. and I like that because I, I like Falcon. I, I mean, I like that, the actor with Anthony, Anthony Mackie. Mackie. I like Anthony Mackie, and I, I thought he did a really good job. Um, I was a little disappointed with Black Widow in this one. Okay, okay. I felt like Scarlett Johansson was making a lot of weird faces, <laughs> and she just kind of seemed... I don't know. I, I thought that her... She just was kind of off to me in this one. Yeah. A little off. Mm -hmm. But, um... But, I mean, o over... My overall impression, I liked it. I yeah. mean, I definitely agree there was some pretty gaping plot holes. Mm -hmm. And there definitely were, um... Yeah. I mean, like always, I think that Marvel totally dropped the ball with its villain. Uh-huh. Like they okay. always do. Okay, we'll get into that. Okay. Except for Loki. Loki's we'll really been the only villain that I liked. I've liked mm -hmm. in a Marvel film. So, I mean, I think the whole... The whole, like, villain subplot, because really the villain subplot didn't have anything to do with the Civil War. It was really, like, two separate Well, he was the movies. instigator of the plot. Well, no, they still would have had a Civil War, regardless of they, the villain. They, the whole Sokovia Accords, yes, I agree. That's what I'm saying. But he fueled the fire with the whole Winter Soldier plot Right, as but well. that wasn't what the Civil War was about. The Civil War wasn't about Bucky. The Civil War was about the Sokovia Accords. Not really, yes, I don't think. really. It was I mean, about the Sokovia It was really Accords. about their, their, their... It started out like that, but then at the end, it was kind of well, about their, no, the their Steve, decision on what to do with Bucky, really. The Steve versus Iron Man fight at the end was about Bucky. Uh -huh. That was about the villain. But that, didn't have, that was not the Civil War. But then the big airport scene was about Civil War, yes. Right, it was not about... The villain. It was mm. about civil. I'm saying this movie really was two separate movies in one. Exactly, it had two separate. Yeah, there was the Accords, and then there was the Winter Soldier sequel. Exactly, and the Winter Soldier bit is what had to do with the villain, the so-called villain. I it didn't have anything to do with the Civil War. The Sokovia Accords still would have you. happened. Okay, I agree with there that. There still would have been the airport fight. I Maybe mean, I've been at the airport if they weren't trying to get mm. to the jet. But there still would have been a civil war that didn't yeah. have to do with. 
that villain. It would have went totally differently, of course. Obviously, the events. Mm -hmm. um, if there wasn't, you know, Winter Soldier and, you know, Captain America trying to help his friend out and stuff like that. Um, Steve still wouldn't have signed the accord, regardless oh, of that. He still would have signed the accord. That's what I'm saying. There but was... I'm curious if there would have been a big old fight like that. Though. Anyway, my point is the whole. There, this movie really was two separate movies in one. This movie tried to do a lot. It was it two did separate, do a lot. Yeah, it tried it to do a lot. Two separate plots, two separate stories involving the same set of characters with two characters that really were just introductions, like we've talked about. Uh -huh. The whole Spider Man and Black, um, Panther. Black Panther thing, they didn't need to be in this movie. Not at all. There was no, <laughs> right. But they, their, their being in it, I don't think detracted from the movie, no. but it didn't add anything to the movie. Except for Spider-Man and a little bit of humor. Yeah. And I thought Black Panther was cool. Like yeah, It like made a, me now want yeah, to see yeah, exactly. the Black Not Panther Not knowing anything movie. about Black Panther, you now want to go see the right, movie, right? Right, now I am interested and, and in that's this. that's why they put him in there. Boom. Right, exactly. exactly. What do you, boom, whatever. Boom. That's a, they did their job. Yeah, that's no, what it is. Except that there was no reason for him to be there. There. I mean, except that. It was purely a publicity stunt, which is fine. Which is fine with me. I'm not against it. I'm just saying I Black, stand by Panther, my boom. Black Panther's role in this movie was 100% a publicity stunt for his film, okay. which I'm fine with. Spider-Man, at least, I mean, he same thing. His addition to this film was purely a publicity stunt, and it was fine. It worked. I thought Spider-Man was really cute and, ch and charming. Like, uh -huh. it was funny. I thought it was clever. So I'm fine with it. But there was really no reason to have him in there. And I feel like they really could have made Civil War more Civil War-ish <laughs> if they had taken away that whole Zemo plot line. Yeah. They, there could have been... That they still could have made really good story and a really good fight and really good battle, just making the film about the Sokovia Accords, where the villain would have been the government. Yeah, think, of the world. Honestly, like the I UN. think I think that's still to come up actually, because now that the Accords are in place and oh god, I totally forgot to mention of course we're going full spoilers, guys. If you haven't oh. seen the movie, <laughs> if I'm, I totally forgot to mention that. So if you haven't seen the movie, pause it, come back. Uh, we're, we're not holding back here, of course. So If you haven't seen it, hopefully you've already turned this off. Exactly. So please, please do and come back to it because it's a awesome ghost movie. Like I said, we've seen it twice. And we want to, we're gonna, I'm going to go see it again. So anyway, so the Accords are in place. But now, of course, now it's where you get the Winter Soldier storyline has been wrapped up. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Bucky is now on ice um, in Wakanda, which people are curious if that will come into play in the Black Panther movie. Um, but, so now Steve, at the end, breaks out his friends, which I'm still curious. <laughs> I really want to know how he got there. That's that was another thing that, uh, negative re reviews or criticism is like, how did he, you know, get in this thing? It's underwater, and, you know, how did he get, how did he get underwater, or get in, and all that? And I'm just like, that's what I want to know. I'm not saying he can't do it, because he's freaking Captain America, you know, but I He just, had to have know. had somebody on the inside helping him. Well, exactly. He probably had some help no, of no, some kind. No, no, not car. probably. He had to. There had to have been somebody on the inside to raise it up so he could land whatever apparatus he was He had to have do. some kind of technical genius. Some, yeah. Somebody some, like, hacker have, maybe or something, Or just too. somebody who was working on the inside. Somebody who was, who, who was a Captain America fan. Yeah, there you that's go. what I'm saying. Okay. See, that's, I just want to know that story is all I want to know. Mm -hmm. I know he can do it because he's freaking Captain America. Mm -hmm. I just want to know how he did it. But anyway, so now, like I said, now comes the the true, I guess, civil war, I guess, where the government is now going to be hunting down Captain America. And I said, when I walked out of this film, I'm like, yeah, I'm excited to see Infinity War and see, you know, where these characters go next. But really, the next movie I want to see is a secret Avengers movie where after Civil War in the comic books, Spider-Man um, and Luke Cage and Iron Fist and Daredevil and, you know, all the Avengers who didn't want to sign... The, uh, the the registration agreement uh, had to go underground and we're trying to you know help people while still running for the government and that's that that's what I'd love to see. I'd love to see you know Captain America well something like that, that is gonna have to happen in the next Avengers well, of course. film because think, the accords are there they're yeah, in the exactly. MCU now. and I think that's where we're gonna start off in you know the next film the next Avengers movie is you're gonna see Captain America and his Secret Avengers. I keep calling them Secret Avengers. Um, They're gonna helping be people. Yeah. Helping people while still trying to stay hidden. Yeah, and that, that it's going to have to start that way until... Thanos becomes a threat, and then the government's going to yeah. have to rethink their plan and, and because they're going to need the Avengers. And that's what I think is going to happen. So, mm -hmm. 
I don't know if I should get into. I'll save. I'll save it for the character mm -hmm. of developments and stuff like that. So just something to think about too. By the end of this, okay. I know we've already kind of discussed this, but um, at the end of this podcast, uh, throwing Civil War into the mix now. Uh, I want to hear your top three Marvel movies. Okay, after this, all right. So like I said, let's just go quick and like just go down characters. Um, and just kind of see, you know, what, how well they did in the film, where they think they're going, stuff like that. And of course, let's start off with the big two. Chris Evans as Captain America. He's awesome. And Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. Mm -hmm. The two stars. I mean, really, you can't talk about this film. The number one thing about this film is its comparison to Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Because they're so similar. Even though when I watched the film a second time, I could see so many comparisons to the film. There's parallels. There are parallels, yes. I mean, really, that's what they're saying. There, you know, it's it's Civil War or it's Iron Man v Captain America. You mm -hmm. know, Dawn of Infinity is what I've been joking about. <laughs> okay, and some people, you know, are, are jokingly calling it Avengers 2.5 as well mm -hmm. because it's got so many of the Avengers in it. And really, mm -hmm. the only Avengers missing were Thor and Hulk. Now, I felt like a po a good portion of this was Steve's story, but towards the end of it, I felt like it got away from him, actually, and I felt like it became a lot more Tony's story as well, too. It's definitely Be Avengers 2.5. Yeah. Marvel can say all they want that this is a Captain America film, and the Rooster Brothers can say all they want this is a Captain America film. This is an Avengers film. The only, the only thing I would go against that is I felt like in the other Avengers films, each character had their own little development in the Avengers movies. Mm -hmm. This one, while a lot of characters got some development, not all of them did. Like Falcon... I see no character development in the story no, at all for it. No, but you know? this movie definitely was more than just Cap's story. Well, that's true. It was, it was more than Cap's story. It was definitely, mm -hmm. you know, Cap Iron Man's story to really mm -hmm. say that. I mean... Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Um, so, these two characters... Great. You know, they've taken a complete 180 on each other, too. Because if you looked at Tony Stark in the first Iron Man film, he was... You know, kind of a selfish guy. Even after he put on the Iron Man suit, he was still arrogant, mm -hmm. kind of rebellious and stuff like that. But what's happened to him since then, throughout the course of the Marvel films, is he has seen his brilliance or his own creations gone awry. Mm -hmm. His Iron Man suits have been used to hurt people. His creations, such as Ultron, have gotten out of his hands and, you know, killed a lot of people, destroyed Sokovia, etc. So I totally get, aside from that Tony seeing that woman in the elevator, kind of giving him that epiphany moment. I see throughout it where Tony's like, hey, I need to be put in check. You know, I have, I have a lot to offer this world, but, you know, my brilliance needs to be checked and, and registered and just, you know, kind of looked after so that I don't have another Ultron on my hands. Okay? So he's kind of flipped. He's he's more about... The only thing is that I, with this whole time... I love Cap in this movie. Tony, not so much. Okay, we'll get, so, into, we'll get into that. Let no, me. but I mean, I'm just saying, in reference to what you're saying, exactly. Like, if you're trying, you know, saying they're, they're, they tried to make in this film, it'd be like, Tony now realizes all the mistakes he's made, and he needs to have, he feels that he, I mean, he feels responsible, which he does, and he has a lot of guilt, which is totally reasonable. Uh -huh. Like, I mean, he created Ultron. That was ultimately his bad. You know, and then they're saying, though, that now that the government will be holding him in check, he feels like that's reasonable, like that he needs to have them keeping him checked. The bottom line is, he already reported to a group. They were called the Avengers. No, he, he, he didn't. They were a group. They were a team. They worked together. They were supposed to be. He was a, a team, team, but he wasn't. He was. They weren't in charge of it. No, but like with the Ultron thing. I mean, with he Ultron, he created Ultron against their wishes. Uh huh. He did that, even though they told him he shouldn't mess with that. And that they told him not to fuck with it. And he did it anyway. So who's to say he's not still going to do that when the time comes that he wants to do something? That's the only qualm I had with him trying to say, I think we need to be kept in check. I think we need the government to be in charge of us. Because he will go along with that now when he doesn't have anything he wants to do. As uh, soon as he gets a good idea and he wants to do it, you don't he's going to do it you anyway. You don't think he's going to be like, hey guys, I have this idea. Do you think it's a good idea? No, I, I think he. I don't think he'll do it with the government. I think he did it to the other Avengers, and then I think he'd do what he wants. I think Tony is the kind of guy who does what he wants. He acts like he wants I, people's opinion. I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah. And he does what he wants. So I think I that know many them, people like that. I agree. I'm just saying I, that was my only fault with him choosing, signing the accords, and being now under the he, government's he's thumb. He's trying to. Well, like you know, again, he was talking about how. 
you're sitting there with Cap where he's like, yeah, you know, I created Ultron. I said I was going to give Iron Man up, and I didn't because I don't want to. And because of this, you know, he's losing Pepper, mm -hmm. you know, someone who he loves. And he's like, well, maybe this is, you know, a good middle ground. And I don't really buy that. That's what I'm I don't saying. Think. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I buy Captain. His passion for what he was saying was clear. Tony, I, I didn't buy it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so moving over to Cap, again, his character arc throughout the Marvel Cinematic Universe started off in the first Avenger, a soldier. You know, he n believed there was good and there was bad and there was a line between it and he followed orders because he believed the people in charge were the ones who knew what was best. But throughout the course of the Marvel movies, he's come to realize that that's not true. Uh, I mean, even in, say, the Avengers, when the World Security Council, who, he, you know, technically followed orders from, decided to launch a nuclear missile at New York, um, he thought that was the wrong decision, as well as the rest of the Avengers did. And then especially, of course, coming off a of Winter Soldier, where he was following orders and working for S.H.I.E.L.D., who he thought were the good guys. But turns out, he was taking orders mainly from the bad guys, HYDRA, an organization that he thought he had destroyed 70-plus years ago. So Cap's coming to this movie with the Accord saying, hey, you're going to work for the government. And Cap, having just seen what... Uh, just following blind orders can do, uh, you know, he's on the other end. So he's kind of, you know, flipped and done a 180 as well as far as his point of view where, again, to quote him, the safest hands are still our own. Mm -hmm. And I totally believe that. And in regards to Bucky, his friend, it's his one link from the past. It's his, you know, best friend. Uh, someone who was always there for him as we, I loved it's still going to be Winter Soldier for me, because Winter Soldier is just such a great film, I think, where you get you totally get the relationship of Cap and Bucky and why he believes in Bucky so much. And also, I get that from watching the first Avenger. You know, I watched you know the first Avenger many times, and then I watched Winter Soldier. And you get that past between the two characters, what Bucky means to him, what they mean to each other, and I totally get it. And, you know, one of the... Well, and they make it believable, the two yeah, of them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. With the, when, of course, one of the criticisms I know I've heard is like, well, you know, after Captain America and Bucky fall off the uh, the helipad and, you know, he picks them up or whatever, why did you just take him back inside? I'm like, because he doesn't trust the government to do the right thing anymore. And after what he's done, you know, after chasing after Bucky, they don't trust him either. You know, Why would he have taken him back inside? Somebody, one of the criticisms what? I heard. Some, that was somebody's yeah. legit criticism? Yeah. That would have been yeah. like the most ridiculous place to have taken yeah. him. If he took him back inside, they would have just put him back in a little prison. Uh -huh. and that doesn't make any sense. At, yeah, a prison that just, you know, let him be manipulated again as that, well. That's crazy. And of course, he just killed a bunch of people. So the minute he takes yeah, him inside, they they're him. just going to kill him. Yeah, that would have been the worst place to take him. Exactly. But I've heard people say otherwise, really. I don't I don't get that logic either. Okay, I don't understand that at all. That's something to go along with. But... Yeah, I think this... I mean, Cap was already a prisoner himself. Yeah. Well, why would he have and gone course, back inside? One of, the, one of the things, of course, was like, well, why didn't, you know, Falcon and Cap got to sit there in that conference room? Why weren't they in prison as well? It was like, because Tony was protecting them. Yeah. Tony tried to give them one last chance with that pen. Tony to says sign. that. Yeah. Tony says that right yeah. out, that the only reason that they're not locked up is because he was exactly. making He's a like, deal. Yeah, exactly, because, you know, Thunderbolt Ross, he wanted him in prison and he's like no i'm giving you one last chance sign it but you know he couldn't do it right. and he still had i think you know to the very end even to that to that you know airport scene where tony was still trying to reason with him you know he didn't want to do it he, he didn't want to put his friends and and cap in you know a prison but mm -hmm. after the airport scene he had no choice of course mm -hmm. um so jumping off a little bit let's go to the airport scene mm -hmm. that was kind of the big scene of the film it's the big action scene it's People comparing it to a kid just taking all of his toy and just going, planking him against you and going, rah, rah, rah. Mm -hmm. And you know what? That's yeah. uh, fine with that. We got a bunch of good surprises, a lot of good action. Um, you saw my face when, you know, during the airport scene. I swear, I was like, my face was so lit up. Just first off, from seeing Spider Man with all the Avengers. That was just a joy because mm -hmm. I never I saw thought it. he was adorable in that scene. I, I, gosh, I never thought I'd see that too. That was great. And then, of course, the big one, what really, really got me was Ant-Man became Jai Ant-Man. You get it? Why are you saying it like that? Well, I, I'll, I'll agree. I took that from Kevin Smith. I'll agree with that. But, yeah, 
giant ant man. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Exactly. Giant man turned to giant man. So now people are like, well, wait, the movie Ant Man and Wasp, can you really call him Ant Man now? So he can grow bigger too? Yes. Okay. Whatever. As long as he go as long as he still shrinks more than he expands, I think you're okay. All right. Anyway, but yes, the that was a, just the airport scene was phenomenal. Um, just you know, a fanboy's wet dream, I guess. <laughs> in, my, in my case, seeing all these characters face off against each other, people were worried from the previews how it was just like a small group of people versus a small group of people just running at each other, and it's not going to be you know compared to what the comics is. Mm-hmm. Of course it's not, but it was still a damn entertaining scene, I think. Yeah, Very was, fun. I thought it was really good. I thought it was really cute and clever and the way that they... I thought Spider-Man in there made it lighter than it. Because it, I think it could have been... I mean, it was already going to be weird seeing friends fight friends. So I think adding Spider-Man to kind of lighten it up a little bit made it made it work. Well, um, and then also just having Ant-Man in there because, you know, he's not really part of the team yet. Yeah. and So I think throwing him in was kind of a... An interesting way to make, just to make it work, to kind of raise the stakes a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's true. I mean, when you see the scene as well, um, what is it, uh, Wanda even, you know, says to Hawkeye, like, you're pulling your punches. Mm-hmm. And they all were. Mm-hmm. I think they all were. Yeah, no, was anybody really in real danger? I no. never really agreed that anybody was in any real danger. I think they were all just trying to neutralize each other mm-hmm. in that respect. And even then, like, in the end, when Rhodey goes down... Falcon, who had been fighting against him most of that battle, you know, flies down and he's like, is he okay? You know, is he alright? And Tony, of course, shoots him, which is, you know, <laughs> just because he was pissed off as well. But overall, that scene was great. The only tidbit I had about that scene was Vision. Now, with Vision, when I first heard that they were going to have Civil War and they, had, they were going to choose sides, now... Thor and Hulk being the big hitters, we're not going to be in this film. I'm like, okay, that's good. Take them out. Because whoever says they're on, you know, it's going to be, mm-hmm. it's one. It's like when uh, Natasha said, she was like, sure, you know, he's, Tony asked her, like, you sure you know where Banner is? And he's like, you really think he'd be on our side? Yeah. Which yeah. was a great comment as well. So then the other big hitter I knew was Vision. He's got the one of the Infinity Gems, which is uber powerful. And I felt like, wow, you know, who's going to be able to take, you know, he didn't vision, really do vision anything. Vision on. I'm, I'm getting to that. I'm getting to that. He did, uh, who's going to be able to take him on? And I was like, well, Wanda with her powers could, but she's not really at full port. She doesn't really know the full extent of her powers. She's still learning her powers. But then I realized while I was watching the movie, none of his vision. Mm-hmm. He's just that new, you know, new as his powers as Wanda is at hers. So I have no doubt that Vision can tap into that stone and, you know, do some, you know, just be a god if he wanted to. Mm-hmm. But... He's still new in his powers like Wanda is new at her powers. Well, and I don't think he wanted to be. No, he didn't. He, he didn't, didn't want to fight. He didn't want to hurt anybody, no. No, he didn't want to hurt anybody. I think that's Which why I, he didn't do anything, really. That's why I was saying to Tessie, that's why he was, he was so absent from that fight as well. Mm-hmm. You know, he didn't do a lot, and some people were like, well, you know, the, the, the vision was there. He would, he would have stopped it in a second. I'm like, it really goes into his personality where he didn't want to fight. No. And, and, of course, he was so worried about Wanda, too, mm-hmm. as well. Her well-being was, you know, his, one of his main priorities as well mm-hmm. in that fight too. So, yeah, I think the 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 fight could have used a little more vision, um, but you know, it is what it is. It's still a hell of a good time, mm-hmm. which I'm totally fine with. Yeah. So, all right, so we covered Cap and Iron Man. So next on the list, Miss Natasha Romanoff, played by Scarlett Johansson. You've already talked about mm-hmm. a little about about this character. Me, I I thought she did a fine job. And with her character, because at the end of Winter Soldier, we saw her take a different role. She dumped all of Hydra slash S.H.I.E.L.D. secrets onto the internet. People know that was her that did it. She stood in front of Congress and kind of, you know, declared herself that she wasn't going to, you know, be put in prison and, and, you know, kind of be the representative for them. And in this movie, you kind of saw her continue that role as far as being at the uh, UN uh, when they were going to sign the Accords as well. And, you know, she wore, I think, more dresses in this film than she did her actual, you know, black outfit. She wore black, too. Yeah, exactly. And she was trying to be more diplomatic in this as Mm -hmm. well. And I like that, too. Of course, for me, my favorite scene with her, though, is the the scene with her and Steve at the end of... uh, Agent Carter's funeral, mm-hmm. because the thing going to this film was when I when I heard that she was choosing 
Tony's side, I was like, that doesn't make any sense because you just went through Witcher Soldier where her and Steve created this great bond between them and, you know, they understood each other and they both were fighting against the government. She went through the same thing that Steve did. Mm -hmm. So why would she side with Tony on this? And she was really at odds the whole film. She was, she chose originally the, so the side with Tony to kind of limit the fallout, to limit the damage, um, to take, you know, responsibility, which I understand, but she never really believed in it. Uh, and that, of course, is evident at the end when she let Bucky and Cap escape and stop Black Panther from going after them as well. Now, another criticism I have is like, well, you know, in the scene there, her last scene with Tony, uh, he was telling her how, like, well, Takala, you know, told Ross what you did and they're going to lock you up. And people are like, why wasn't she already locked up if they already knew what she did? And I'm like, well, they probably hadn't come for her yet, really, is what it was. So, But she's run off now, so what do you think is going to happen to her? I think she's going to find Cap. She's, she's going to find Cap? Yeah. She's not going to like try to just disappear? No. I can, honestly, I can see her saying, Dude, oh, I need to take a break. I'm stepping out of this. Why not go, go find Banner? I think if Scarlett Johansson wants a break from the movies, and I think that that's an ideal opportunity... For her to take a break, I think if she doesn't want to take a break, then I think she'll find Cap. Okay. So let's throw this other piece of news that came out last week, where Kevin Feige said they want to do a solo Black Widow film, and they're trying to think of a way to do it right now. And there are several slates in the Marvel Cinematic Universe coming up here in the next you know, three or four years that they've set dates for, but they haven't set movies do you think one of them will be a black panther or black widow film i don't know i don't know that i mean i like black widow but i don't know that she needs yeah. her own film I'm, i mean i'm gonna agree with you on that i think she's a great supporting character mm -hmm. great in the avengers great in winter soldier um but i think what her... makes her great is the way she interacts with yes. all of the avengers yes. I, I don't I think the solo that. movie uh, I, don't, I don't think it's i'm gonna, not feeling yeah, it i'm not feeling it either i think she needs to continue to be a supporting character mm -hmm. um you know and so and I'm fine with that. I think she, Scarlett Johansson did a great job. Of yeah. course, you know I love seeing her on screen whenever I can. Um, but yeah, I think she works better in, a, better in a supporting role. But if Kevin Feige says, hey, we're going to find a way to make it great, in Feige, I trust. Yeah. So we'll right. move on from there. All right. Continuing down our list of characters, uh, we have the man who is being chased after Bucky Barnes, a.k.a. Slash the Winter Soldier. This is another one of those characters I didn't feel had a lot of character development in this film um it was more about you know his character and steve um i mean don't get me wrong i liked his role in the film but i also felt like he his only purpose there was to you know feed the feud between you know tony and steve i get that mm -hmm. so yeah i think he played his part role his role well what I think did I think it was phenomenal? No, but it served its purpose, much like a lot of characters in this film. Yeah, I think he was all right. Yeah, cool. And I like so now, like I said, he, he wasn't my favorite, but he, I, I like like I said, in this film, he's, we wrapped up his storyline. I feel uh, that started in Winter Soldier. He's gone under ice in Wakanda. Do you think he could possibly pop up in Black Panther since he is at Wakanda? Yeah, I mean, I think. I think it's a possibility. I, I think, think he's in Wakanda. I, I don't know what the Black Panther story is going to be. I don't know anything about yeah. Black Panther except for what I learned in this film, which isn't much. Yeah, I mean, in this tease, I mean, that, that middle credit scene we got, it felt like, you know, where Steve was like, if they find out you have them, they're going to come for you. He's like, let them come. And I'm like, did they just set up the plot for Black Panther, maybe? I don't know, maybe. Maybe, possibly. I mean, it would seem very strange, though, for Black Panther and like Winter Soldier to team up together. Considering he was chasing him the entire yeah, movie. Yeah, but he did admit he was wrong in yeah. the end, so who knows? Exactly. Um, I think we'll definitely see a picture of him. Because remember, Sebastian Stan, he signed on for, I think, nine movies, 12 mm -hmm. movies, something like that, and he's only done three. Mm -hmm. So, granted, I'm sure those other movies will have a very small part in, but that could be one of the things where you just see him on ice mm -hmm. in Black Panther, or maybe when the government starts coming for him, uh, Black Panther realizes he needs some help, so let's uh, unfreeze Bucky so he can help us out here. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. But uh, then, of course, next up we had, which we talked a little bit about, was Falcon. Falcon, I felt like they really stepped up his game mm -hmm. compared to the last week. He, kind of like Ant-Man or Hawkeye, they kind of, people always make fun of him 
uh, because compared to some of the other Avengers like Captain America, or Thor, or Iron Man, he's not that powerful. Mm -hmm. And Winter Soldier, we saw him just basically fly around, shoot people. Mm -hmm. I thought it was cool, really, because remember, yeah, he he's not—he's not, you know, he doesn't have a, a metal armored super suit. He's not a god. He doesn't have superhero serum. So just to see a regular guy like that, you know, in the fight was awesome. Uh, I really like that. And then people are criticizing how in Ant Man he couldn't hold his own even against Ant Man. But as I thought well. it was really cute how they drew attention to that yeah. in this one, where he's he like, was like when he was talking like, to Scott, you know, he was all like, "It's not going to happen again." Exactly. And his new suit is awesome. Yeah, they stepped up his suit. Yeah, they uh, did. Red Bird, his little drone. That was so cute. In the comic books, he actually has a bird called Red Bird, which actually he can like see what he sees as well. Mm -hmm. And they did the you know they did the updated you know cinematic universe version of that, mm -hmm. which was a flying drone. Mm -hmm. um, which was really cool. I loved that scene where Falcon goes to Natasha and he's like, go ahead, pet him. Pet him. He's cute, huh? Right? That was fun too. And then of course his wings, they did so much more with his wings yeah, now. That was, I like, like how they would like wrap around Made the him, shield and they, yeah. and they shot stuff out. And yeah, they, it was Like cool. I said, they really tried to step up and try to make him more of a, uh, a power hitter, mm -hmm. really. Um, but I think they did a good job. I, I really was really impressed yeah, with that. Yeah, powers wise, I get it. But again, just it's one of those characters. He was, <laughs> I'm going to say this, he was Robin. He was just Cap's sidekick, going along with him the whole time. That's all his purpose was, just to be there for Cap. Didn't really have any character development, which, again, serves the movie because the title of the film is Captain America, so they try I mean, to that's keep... what he is. He's a sidekick. Yes, of course. And, of course, going back to Bucky, uh, people have been talking about, or the cast has been talking about, um, you know, the, the feud, really, between Bucky and and falcon which you got cute. to see that was my favorite film in our favorite scene in the film was the scene with them in the car where you know that was your favorite scene yes because well it doesn't wasn't just because of that okay because um i've talked to josh and talked to people like you know what cap's gone all this time and he hasn't really gotten the action since the first movie and even then it was just a little peck on the cheek man Tony's got a girl, Thor's got a girl, Hulk's got a girl. What about Cap? Cap's a boy. I want to see him get some action. And in that scene, finally got some action. So I was right there along with Falcon and uh, and Bucky and being like, yeah. But isn't that, didn't you love that? How it's like, that's it a typical guy. Yeah, oh no. That's a guy scene. That's yeah, what guys totally would do, right? Cute. That whole scene was cute. You know, like when Bucky asked him to move the chair and he was like, no. no. And so Bucky like moves over. Could, yeah. It, and yeah, I mean, it was a cute scene. It was. I just would hardly call it my favorite scene. It was film. just because the, the the relationship she got between everyone, not only in the car, but outside the car as well. Um, but yeah, I, it, it just worked for me. I really liked it a lot. But with Falcon, like I said, he didn't serve a major purpose. He was just there along for the ride. Mm -hmm. And that he's, he's Cap's sidekick as well. And, you know, with that scene too, it's like they kept on comparing it to, you know, it's like when your high school friends meet your college friends, you know? Mm -hmm. they're, they're, you're different, so they're different, so mm -hmm. you might get a little uh, squabble in between there. Mm -hmm. But of course, the, the most hilarious line was when Spider-Man wrapped, wrapped both of them up in the webs and they're like, I hate you. <laughs> that was hilarious too. But yeah, I love their little kind of feud for, you know, Cap's best friend. Mm -hmm. Speaking of best friends, uh, War Machine, James Rhodes, mm -hmm. had uh, something tragic happen to him in this film. Rhodey's like one of my least favorite characters. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's the thing too, where they showed the trailer and they showed him going down. I like, would have been totally fine if Rhodey had died. I would have been fine with it too, but... Um, I think it would have probably helped... Because there would have been some real stakes finally. Some more fuel. But I, I, I am, I really have nothing. I am totally indifferent to Rhodey I think, in these films. I think Cap, I mean, I'm sure Cap already feels bad about what happened to Rhodey. He would have felt even worse about what happened if, you know, he actually would have died. Mm -hmm. And of course we were, all con we were all talking about, you know, they showed him going down in the, the, the trailer. They showed Tony holding his body. He was unconscious and they're like... Did they just show us his death? I mean, they're really going to give away that surprise? And yeah, no, because they didn't. he didn't die. Yeah. But I think now, with his, you know, with him being kind of paralyzed, it's going to be a, an opportunity to grow the character more. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he's another supporting character that is not going to get the amount of time to kind of open up um, and explore that a little more because the, the focus is still going to be on Cap. It's still going to be on Tony. It's still, you know, the next Avengers film you have... Hulk and Thorbax. So, supporting characters like War Machine, I think, aren't going to get that uh, time to let their characters breathe and grow that much. So, And I'm fine with that because I really don't... 
Even at the end, after all that happened, and he's all like, I still think I made the right choice. Like, so, oh, what a douchebag. <laughs> you know, he's really? all like, but he's, he's all this. Off, and, I mean, he's he, military, he, right. He's but, he's followed orders his whole life. Yeah, I get it. so I mean, I get that he's on that side, but I was just like, shut up. I was like wow. really weird. I, I wow. was. I was like really I didn't know you had such him. hatred. I was annoyed by him. Wow, okay. All right. I, I was. I just thought, come on. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, going down the line, then we got uh, Clint Barton returns as Hawkeye. Mm-hmm. Uh, just towards the end, of course, he was in retirement. Uh, Cap kind of signaled him, saying, like, hey, can you help me out? Came out of retirement, got Wanda, um, and helped out in the battle, and then ended up getting locked in prison. Mm-hmm. Um, he wasn't in the movie a lot, but again, I think he served his purpose. And what do you think kind of drove him to step out of the shadows, really, a little bit? Well, he said he had a debt. He was trying to make up for what happened to uh, to oh, Pedro. Pedro. Okay, yeah. I agree with he that. He said that. He, okay. he said that when they asked when he went to get Wanda. He said, I, I, I owe a debt. Yeah, but he owes a debt to Wanda. Wanda and not Cap, right? Right, but he came to get Wanda out of for her Cap. little prison for Cap. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, that's what he said. He, I mean, I, I get it because, you know, he knew Wanda was being held there yeah. pretty much against her will. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he did go and, and get her. I, I understand that. I don't know. If, I I understand. A lot of people kind of criticized Age of Ultron for, you know, that that farm scene with Hawkeye and giving him a family, and they're like, I thought oh. it was nice. I, I liked thought, it. Uh, and again, that's just me from my perspective now because now I do have a family, of course, so I understand that. So when I saw Hawkeye pop up in this film, I was like, you know, what what's this going to mean for his family? I mean, you know, what's it going to mean? This is the consequences of his actions and how they will affect his family as well. Well, the thing is, though, his family knows this is what he does. You know, it's kind of like the whole thing, like when Tony was talking about him and Pepper breaking up, you know, and he was like, you know, but I know I'm hard to deal with. And he's like, but, and and even when he was talking out loud himself and he said, you know, but my dad was that way too. And he found someone who was willing to put up with it. And I think that's exactly what it is with Clint. Clint's wife knows who he is. She knows what he is. She knows that he has a sense of duty and that he, if she really expected him at some point to really give it all up and sit at home, I don't think that's what she would have wanted for him. She knows every time he leaves, he may not come back. And it's just like anybody who has like a spouse in the military. They know every time that they leave, that they have a sense of duty, they're doing what they they're doing it because they want to, and that they may not come back. And even if you don't aren't happy with that, like that's who they are. That's who they are, and I think that's who Clint is. He is an Avenger. He, you know, he wants to help. He doesn't want his team to be out fighting well, and him sitting and at home. That's true as well. With um, and I, going back to Age of Ultron, where he was talking with his wife, and he's like. And she was like, oh, you're afraid they don't need me. And she's like, I'm afraid they do need you, you know? Yeah, and I think she's right. Again, he's one of the people that helps ground them. Yeah, I I totally think that him pretending he was retiring doesn't make any sense. And I did think it was cute, though, when he came out and he he said, what are you doing here? And he said, disappointing my kids. Yeah, exactly. True, because the kids don't get it. Yeah, because he's, you know, he he tries to balance it as much mm -hmm. as he can. But, again, he has, you know, abilities. I'll jump over to Spider-Man just for a quick second where... You know, Spider Man. I was so afraid they were going to do the classic with great, great power comes great responsibility. But they took that and they rephrased it, where um, Peter was like, "If you have the abilities I have, and the bad stuff happens, they happen because of you." Yeah, I really like that that scene. Where that was, was a great line. I think that, and you could see how it was making Tony think. Yeah. About how he was giving all that up because the government said to. Uh-huh. You could see it in Tony's eyes. I think yeah. that he was second guessing. And again, I'm just going to you know take that back. Talk Hawkeye. It, you know, he has certain skills that can help a lot of people and if he sits at home in the farm and lets the bad things happen you know he, he knows mm-hmm. it's partially his fault so <laughs> there, there's a bird chirping it's outside is the patio door open i don't know hold on let's go find <laughs> out hold on all right guys lisa has gone to check the patio to see if there's a bird in our place bird free are we good bird free bird free okay good job guys falcon has not entered the nest Okay, cool. All right, so we're back. Um, we're talking about Hawkeye. Uh, I think we can move on from there. Uh, so let's get to one of the characters introduced, Takala, aka Black Panther. You've expressed again his uh, your uh, your pleasant. I liked him. Tone. Yes, you liked him. Okay, uh, I think he's, again he served his purpose. I didn't think 
he needed to be in the film. No. But again, it was introduction, of course. And that's what, you know, people are saying, well, you didn't need Spider-Man, you didn't need Black Panther. These two characters didn't really add anything to the storyline. No, they didn't, okay? But they were there to introduce their own storyline. So that way, instead of getting a whole Black Panther movie about his origin, guess what? We already know his origin, pretty much. We don't need to spend a whole movie doing his origin. Now, for the Black Panther movie, we can just get great... Get into the good stuff, you know? Well, I'm sure there'll still be origin. There'll be a little bit, but yeah. there's not... But it's be. just to get people to want to watch it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the same thing, like we were talking about, that they did with Wonder Woman and Batman v Superman. There was no need for her to be in that film. Her purpose in that film was 100% to introduce her film. Yeah. To make you want to see her film. Mm -hmm. And it worked. I want to see your film. So anyone who criticizes again... So, I mean, I'm just saying, Spider-Man, Black Panther... Wonder Woman, they all have the exact same purposes in their and their their roles in these films were to introduce their upcoming films, period. Mm -hmm. So whether it's right or wrong or necessary or whatever, it's it happened. It's uh -huh. there. I want to see their films now, so it worked. Exactly. A general audience member like yourself and who it, doesn't know anything about Black Panther. Right. Now you want to see and it. And it didn't take away from the film. I don't think, you know, Black Panther or Spider Man or in Batman of Superman, Wonder Woman's presence detracted from the film it didn't take it away from the film it wasn't necessary but it didn't it wasn't a negative effect i don't think so especially if it made me want to see the next movie so i'm fine with it yeah it's cool i mean like i said you didn't need him in the film but it was cool and i like how the character wasn't yeah he was mad and he was hunting bucky because he thought bucky killed his father but as soon as he realized he didn't he came to a senses the only thing i did not like about the black panther thing was Black Panther, you know, T'Challa, his dad, mm -hmm. was the primary... His people being killed inadvertently by the Avengers was the starting point of launching these accords. Yeah. And then the minute that they're signed, his dad dies, and he's like, fuck the accords, I'm gonna go be a vigilante. Good point, good it, point. It literally was like the complete opposite of what he was there trying to accomplish <laughs> with his dad. So literally, I didn't think of that, on yeah. his father's deathbed, he was like, fuck what you were just trying to do, dad. I'm going to go avenge you. I'm going to go go against what I'm you're gonna trying go to do. I'm going to go against, exactly, exactly. That was my only issue with his purpose in the film, is it literally was 100% against, against what his dad was trying to do. Is, yeah, but you know, it goes into... The theme, another thing, a the theme of this film was vengeance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was Baron Zemo, vengeance for his family. Revenge. Black Panther, vengeance for his family. And then Tony at the end, vengeance for his family. That was mm -hmm. kind of a, a key throughout the film. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the themes as well. So, Black Panther, I think um, I had seen um, Chadwick Boseman in other films such as 42 and Get On Up. Um, wasn't really impressed with him, but I like what he did in this film. I think he did he a great job. He always so sad. <laughs> Even before his dad died, he had a very sad, very sad face. Yeah, okay. All right, so moving on, uh, we have uh, Vision and Scarlet Witch, a.k.a. Wanda Maximoff. I loved what they did with these two in this film. I thought their interactions were the great. interactions good. were great, of they course. They had a lot of chemistry. They I did, thought. exactly. I thought it was really great. I think it speaks to them, you know, as an actor and actress, too, as far as how good they are as well, and how serious they're taking these roles. You know, mm -hmm. some people... Paul Bettany could have been like, oh, I'm just a robot. I'm like, no, he took the role seriously. And going, Paul Bettany always takes his role seriously. Going back to <laughs> what I was saying before where, yeah, they're both still so new with their powers um, that, you know, they can kind of relate to that with each other as well. And you can see Vision. He wants to learn to be more human, as, but he doesn't quite understand it. Like he's kind of developing kind of feelings but he can't understand it from a, you know, logical point of view. You know, these feelings like how he tries to protect Wanda and look after her. But it's against what he his goal is as well. So he can't really... He, the, the, the robot part of himself can't really figure it out. What's going on? He can't understand feelings, you know, mm -hmm. in that respect. Uh, but there's great... The one thing I did notice, though... So when Wanda took down Vision, kind of wrapped him up... People were like, why didn't he just, you know, phase through it or whatever? And when Wanda was using her powers, you could see the stone inside Vision glowing. Now, remember, Wanda and Pietro, they were experimented on with that same stone, and that's how they got their powers. So, where her powers come from that, does she have some kind of power to manipulate the stone as well? Well, Vision implies that she does. Yeah. 
When? When he's talking to her in oh. the kitchen. He's talking about his stone, and he's talking about... He, he says something. I can't remember exactly. Well, he was talking about how he, you know, if he learns more about it, he could be able to control no, it. No, no, no. He's t when he talks, he talks about how she gets her power from that stone. Like, he talks about that in that mm -hmm. scene. Yeah. I don't remember exactly what he said, but he he mentions mm -hmm. how her power comes from that stone, and yeah, and I don't remember exactly what it says, but okay. So yeah, but those two characters, I think they did great. Uh, Vision people have been criticizing him how he wears clothes. I think that I thought it was super cute. Like it's exactly what he would have tried exactly, to do to blend exactly, in. Exactly because he wants to learn to be more human, so mm -hmm. that's what exactly what he would do. Um, so yeah, I totally love you know their interactions. Of course, with Wanda, um, I don't. Know, did you? I mean, I know there were parts where her accent was getting a little choppy. Did you ever feel like it was, you no. know, lost or anything like that? I, I wasn't. I didn't think so. I thought she did fine. I think she did fine, you know. Um, but yeah, her character, I really liked how they, you know, they introduced, they kind of went through that. And she was kind of under, you know, Cap's tutelage at mm -hmm. the beginning there where, you know, he knows that, you know, again, she's just a kid. She still doesn't understand this huge power that she has. And Cap has tried to, you know, get her to be comfortable with it. And get her to understand a little better, just to you know, not only be, um, you know, better at her job, but also to you know, help people keep keep people safe, I guess, in that regards. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so let's go to the insect insects here. We have Ant Man and um, Spider Man. So Paul Rudd. I love Paul Rudd. He's great. He's great. He did a great job. I love that scene where he's first shaking Cap's hand. He's like, "I'm shaking your hand too long." Oh yeah. Like that scene was so cute. So. Up until that point, when I went through and watched the second film, the tension and tension and tension had been rising throughout the film. And you've gotten a few small jokes in there, but not a big ones. And then you brought in Spider-Man and Ant-Man. And then from there, the jokes ensued in that airport scene. They were the one, you know, giving them and stuff like that, which people are, of course, people criticize the Marvel movies because they're too jokey. But in my, I think when I was watching that film, I got to that point, and I'm like, man, this is intense stuff it's really intense and i'm just like all the tension has now been broken because of all this mm -hmm. jokes and stuff like that Which i like the jokes some people say oh well, you were ruined it you know it wasn't necessary in this you know fight it, it it made it so there was no stakes and i'm just like yeah maybe but at the same we time we already knew there was no stakes it was damn entertaining is what i'm saying and it was great mm -hmm. so well, the difference that's the thing like we knew that they were only half-assed fighting each other mm -hmm. and that nobody was gonna really die it's a marvel movie mm -hmm. so like Everyone, the, the humor is not what took away the stakes. So, now, now get to that. So, that's what people are saying where there are no stakes. So, kind of like going back to Batman v Superman. We knew when Superman died, he was coming back. He wasn't dead. So, we didn't care. No. So, did you feel that same way going into this movie? Like, yeah. oh, nobody's going to die. No one's going to die. I didn't think anyone was going to die. Okay, so people, because for me, that was kind of a, a critique of Batman v Superman. I wasn't 100% that, you know, no one was going to die. I could see someone dying, but you were sure that no one was going to die. In this one? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't oh, really? think they were going to kill him. I, I, I could have seen them taking somebody out. All these movies, the only one they've ever killed is Pietro, and no one even cared about him. Like, no one even knew him. He had his sacrifice. He had his moment. I'm so. just saying. And the only reason they kept him dead is because he's in the X-Men movies. <laughs> right. I'm just... That, that's what I'm saying. Like, they're, the Marvel movies, I do not think anyone's going to die. I mean, I don't necessarily have a problem with that. Although I think if someone was gonna die, this movie probably would. I think in okay. Infinity War, so someone got to die. Another criticism as but well. But I don't know if they will. Going back to Falcon, of where he was doing his shield thing, where they were uh, fighting, and he sent out those rockets, and he you know exploded and probably killed those guys, mm -hmm. and of course all those people who had a problem with Batman killing people in Batman v Superman, they were like, "What are these criticisms for? You know, Civil War? Falcon just killed those guys." What do you say to that? Um, I think that in the Marvel Universe, there isn't any kind of... I'm there, better. there isn't, no. It's not like Batman and Superman who both have codes about killing people. It's a huge part of their characters that yeah. they don't kill. I agree there right. isn't anything in the know, Marvel it's, Universe It's not like... like I mean, you go back to Winter Soldier. I mean, Falcon and Cap, they killed people while they were, you know, in the big battle, you know? Yeah. They, these characters have killed before. It's not like they just started killing in Civil well, War. Well, and, and Captain says, and not even just in this movie, you know, you have to sometimes kill some to save the mass. Mm -hmm. and I mean, I think that, that that's something that I think is kind of a thread through the Marvel films. That The only reason I had a problem with it in Batman and Superman is because Batman and Superman are all it's about... It's a core to their, their characters. Yeah, their yeah. cores are about not not taking lives. Mm -hmm. So that that's the only reason it bothered me there. It doesn't bother me in the Marvel movies because 
number one, they generally are killing bad guys. Yeah, I mean, and Captain America is a soldier. Guess yeah. what? He kills. Yeah, you know, and so is so is Falcon. Yeah, exactly. So that criticism kind of yeah. yeah. I mean, and it's like they always say, anytime they go into one of those battles, people are going to die. Yeah, you have to. Sometimes you have to accept people that. People have to die in order to save everyone else. Yeah, gotcha. Cool. All right, so Spider Man. You, I know you're not a big fan of Spider-Man no, films. not so much. But are you looking forward to, how'd you like this Spider-Man and does it make you look forward to Spider-Man Homecoming? Um, I mean, I like this Spider-Man. I thought it was clever. I, li- I think, I like that he looks like a high schooler. Uh, yeah. You know, okay. like, he he's acts not like, like a high schooler too. Right. He's got his earbuds in, he's got his backpack. Yeah. He's got a squeaky voice. You yeah, know? like, I, I totally believe this is a high school kid. I totally believe this is a brand new Superman, I mean, Spider-Man, brand new guy using his powers, learning how to use them. Mm-hmm. With a sense of duty, like he's awkward, you he's, know. Yeah, I totally believe it. Um, his interactions with the other guys, you know, he's like starstruck. Like I, I totally believed. It. I thought it was cute. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm excited for Homecoming. I'll see it. Yeah. I've never been a huge fan of Spider-Man films in yeah. general, so I mean, yeah. I'm, I don't know. We'll see. But I, I thought he did a really good job. I was not a fan of the last interpretation of Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man. Um, but I enjoyed the Tobey Maguire films. Yes, the third one wasn't that good, but the first two can more than make up for it. Um, with this one, on this, yeah, we got Spider-Man, and he made me laugh. Um, but there wasn't, again, no real character development, no real sense of you know how well Tom Holland can do as the character with those deeper, you know, more dramatic moments. Mm-hmm. Um, so he did okay. Um, it doesn't make me any more excited for Spider-Man Homecoming than it already was. Again, I was already going to go see it. Um, but, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. Yeah. <coughs> so, I am real excited, though. Not excited, but anxious to see. Because they already said Robert Downey Jr. is going to be in Spider-Man Homecoming. And you see their kind of... Dynamic. Dynamic as well. So, I'm anxious to see what Robert Downey Jr. does. Because Spider-Man Homecoming is coming out before the next Avengers film, which is hopefully going to you know bring the team back together so i'm curious to see where tony is at that point is he you know and you got that from one of the reasons you know tony has been watching peter i think because he sees himself in peter that young genius who just needs to be given a chance as well so i think that then they've had that relationship in the comics too so in that respect i think he's going to continue to watch peter he's going to continue to guide him um, how well he does now that he feels like he is kind of off his game. We'll just have to wait and see. So with Spider-Man Homecoming, not any more excited to see Spider-Man, but I am a little more excited to see uh, Tony and where he's at in that film in regards to you know his uh, emotional journey. Mm-hmm. So, so there's that. All right, so we're coming down to the end here. A uh, couple of characters left. Miss Sharon Carter. Mm. <laughs> now... I know, like I said, I've read Captain America comic books. I know that when Cap wakes up from the ice, he meets Sharon Carter, who is, you know, his former love interest is Anne, which I thought, because this is more of a gap than what they were in the comic books, that instead of being an aunt, they were he was gonna be like grandma or, you know, great grandma or something like that. But they kept it at aunt, which I'm fine with. But I knew they were that's another reason why I'm not fine with it, and let me tell you why. Okay. So we learn from Agent Carter, the show, huh? that Peggy's brother huh? dies. Huh? He's not married, doesn't have any kids. Huh? So how is she his, this aunt? Who says that's his only sibling? In the, well, in the show, it implied that it was just the two of them. Uh, maybe it's, maybe. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. We I'm don't just know. saying, based on the show, I know the show and the cinematic universe are separate. I, I get you, I get you on that. I'm just saying, my understanding of Peggy and her family dynamic was her brother, her only sibling, mm. died okay. in the war. Prior to her becoming a spy. Go back and rewatch that episode. Prior, the, I mean, the family pictures, if I do recall, only had her and her brother and her parents. Ooh, can we? Fu- is, this, is this a continuity flaw in the Marvel I Cinematic mean, I, Universe? I mean, maybe I am wow. not. Maybe I missed something. Wow! But that's what bothered me. And then I thought, well, maybe it would be based on her her spouse. But her name is Carter, so it's obviously in her family line. Yeah. So unless it's like a distant, um, yeah, like her mother or father's sister or brother's huh, this line. I mean, I'm just, I'm curious. I mean, the only explanation is well, that and she... and if Peggy's freaking 90 and this 30-year-old yeah, is her niece... that's what I said. Niece, they'd rather do a grandma. That don't make no freaking sense. 
She'd have to be, Peggy would have to be her, like, great, great, great aunt or something. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying, the bigger gap. Because, you know, when he first introduced her, it was the mm -hmm. 60s. So that's only, like, you know, 20, 30 years difference. Yeah, so like, it's aunt's reasonable. Fine. But now we're at 70, 80 years. Yeah. So I felt like it should Even be. Even if she did have another sibling, there's no way this is her sibling's kid. Unless it's a much younger sibling, and she was just close with her brother because they were close in age, and there's a much younger Even sibling. Even if her parents had had her and her brother when they were, like, 18 and then 20 years later had another kid that still would be too old to be her parent uh -huh, okay I totally I got you I, totally I mean I'm you. just saying I mean I'm just saying maybe that's, I think it was a stretch I think we making need, Peggy I think aunt. we need to email Kevin Feige and be like yo Kevin what's up bro mm -hmm. you know because I think you might have found a continuity flaw in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, maybe one of the first. Yeah, and they so, really, they just shouldn't, they just shouldn't have made it her aunt. They should have made it her grandma or, I don't know, mm -hmm. something else. So, going back to the character herself, like I said, I've known Sharon Carter was going to hook up with Steve. I've been rooting for this since they first introduced her in, in Winter Soldier. Um, I was totally fine. And she, you know, she was helping Cap, of course, the whole time. She was, you know, she was part of the CIA, but she helped get their gear back. She helped, you know, turn the radio on so they could listen to what, to Bucky's interrogation, stuff like that. But then, of course, at the end of the film, once she finally helped them, she realized she had to go on the run as well. So do you think she's going to hook up? I think she's going to hook up with Cap. I'm not sure about Natasha going back to Cap, but I think she will. Um, Natasha's not going to Cap. I don't think Cap wants that anyway. Okay. Well, you just said that she was probably going to do Oh, it. I thought you meant like in a relationship type no, of No, not going back. No, a, no. Yeah, no. I think she's going to go back and be an Avenger. Um, I, I think, I, I don't know what will happen with Sharon Carter. I think Sharon I, should I go back, know. especially since they've now started their romance. Yeah, exactly, as well. And that kiss, while I felt it was a little awkward the second time around, I thought it was a little less awkward. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah. I thought it was fine for I, a first I, kiss. I thought it felt a little first awkward. First kisses are awkward. Yeah, maybe. I don't know, but... Um, but yeah, overall, I like the character. Of course, people were like too criticizing her eulogy, how it was like totally on the nose. Oh you yeah, know, speaking it was ridiculous. Routine. But I think it is, it's not like, I don't think it was the filmmakers, you know, you know, subtly trying to, you know, say what. It wasn't what, subtle. Unsubtly then, mm -hmm. saying what Cap needed to hear. I think it really was her. I think it was her knowing what, you know, she knew about the Accords, of course, and she knew that he was going to be in turmoil about it. Mm -hmm. So I think that was, she made that eulogy to speak directly to Steve. Why wouldn't she have just talked to Steve? Because she had no idea who he was, remember? When she walked up on that podium and he had no idea that that was Peggy's niece. You mean he had no idea who she was? Yes, exactly. I still don't see why that doesn't mean he knew her. No, but he didn't trust her. Because at the in Winter Soldier, after he found out that, he had, that she had been spying on him... Mm -hmm. He was like neighbor, you know, like he was he was mad at her. I guess. So this was kind of her way of not only kind of apologizing, but her first time seeing him since then to say, hey, you need to do the right thing. What a coincidence that Peggy happened to die at that moment then. Of course. And people, of course, are criticizing how ridiculous it was to see Peggy's funeral in the middle of this whole, you know, court situation. But that's where the story... And people had also mm -hmm. said that because she's been such a big part of Steve's life that... And of course, she had her own TV series that her dying off screen was kind of a jip. Yeah, but she's know? like 90. Yeah. What are they going to do? She can't go out in a blaze of glory at I know, that point. I know. But people are like, well, it's ridiculous. And I mean, like, what are they going to have her do? Jump out and start fighting somebody on the I'm, street? I'm just saying, like, you know, they, they maybe like they thought, like, you know, Cap should have been at her bedside or whatever, but he had other stuff going on, obviously. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't do that. So that, again, those are my ridiculous critiques that I've heard mm -hmm. about the film. All right. So, last one. Let's get into this right here. Zemo, yeah. the villain of the film. Now, I'm not going to ask you to judge him by this film, but let me ask you this. How did you feel about him compared to the other villains in the Marvel Cinematic Because the Marvel Cinematic Universe has not been known for its villains. No. People are saying they're very lackluster. Mm -hmm. um, I would put him, honestly, in my top half, though. I don't know. I just, I really have not liked any of the villains Except okay. for... I'm going into this comparison, Loki. though. I'm going to go this, and you know what? People may hate me for it, but I'm going to go into this. He was a much better antagonist than what Lex Luthor was. 
Okay, let's not do a comparison. I'm gonna, I have to movie. compare this because this is the number one thing I want to compare the films about. Okay, his plan was just as stupid as Lex's plan. But he it had, made just as little sense. No, it made perfect sense. No, it made no, no sense. No, he wanted to avenge his no, family. No, no, that makes sense. I'm not. No, I'm saying the details of his plan made no sense. Okay, wanting the Avengers to kill themselves off by by creating tension on the inside that would strike a wedge into their relationship. And because he's upset that their plan and that Ultron ultimately killed his family, that, the rationale uh-huh. for his plan, okay. I get. Okay, let's stop right there. That rationale made more sense to me than what Lex Luthor was trying to do in that maybe Superman. Okay, that, that's fine. Okay, that's all I want to say. That's all I want to say is they did a better job with that rationale than what they did in Batman. Yeah, Superman. but the plan didn't make any sense at all. Okay, go there for that. There were so many variables. Go, go, give me it. Doesn't, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. There is no, you would, there was no way in, in any kind of reality sense that all those pieces that he, were necessary to make this plan happen would have actually aligned in the way that they did. He didn't plan it all. From the get-go. Remember at the very beginning, he didn't want to, you know, go through everything that we saw. He, he, he had that uh, former Hydra guy where he's like, hey, tell me the plan. Otherwise, I have to do terrible things. Yeah. Tell me tell me what I want to know or I have to do terrible things. Still, it doesn't he, make any sense. The, the, there's no way that everything would have aligned the way no, that he, it did. No, boom. Because you know what? He had a plan B. He had a plan C. He had a plan D. He was a special forces guy, okay? I just he knew how to sense. adapt, okay? So he had an idea. He had a plan of what he wanted to do, okay? And when people started messing with him, he had to divert his plan. He had to divert his plan here. Mm-hmm. Well, they didn't do what they wanted. They got a diverse. He, he had. I still don't options. think it would have actually ended the way that. I agree. Planned. You know, it's it's pretty far fetched. It's very far, but it's not that far fetched from other films. I, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's worse than others. I'm not. I'm just saying I thought it was an incredibly far fetched. I don't think that his whole thing was necessary at all in this film. I think it was because I disagree. His whole plan, well, again, was to get the Avengers to fight each other. They were already fighting each other. Uh, but, again, it had to be based a lot to do with no, the Winter Soldier. It, did, it, it, did. it didn't. Their whole airport scene was for them to get to Siberia. Right, but this guy himself didn't create the Winter Soldier or the tension. No. He, he drew him out. That's it. He drew him out, which created more tension. But no matter what, he would have at some point been found but, by Cap, okay, and but, it would have but drawn say, him out. But say you didn't have it. Say you just had the Accords, okay? And Cap disagrees with this, and Tony Gris disagrees with this. Do you really think, being the logical people that they are, they would have gotten to fist fight? I think at, they would have as soon as something happened, whether it was Bucky or not. I disagree. As soon as something I happened. With that. No, I'm not even done talking. As soon as something <laughs> happened that Captain felt he needed to fight about, it would have started. It and, would have started then. Then you know what? Tony would have been like, oh yeah, he's right. I do need to go help him. I don't think so. Because you know what? That's what he did. At the end of the fight, he learned what was going on and instead of going to be on like, you know, the gun ho to go catch him like he was, he's like, Oh, I'm not here to stop you. I'm here to help you take down Zemo. Yeah, and then he sees this video and all of a sudden everything that he okay. believes goes to shit. So doesn't make any sense. let's get into that. He, that, like, literally, let's, would, let's he go, knew go. that Bucky had he been brainwashed. He knew that Bucky had been brainwashed, okay? And it, people are comparing this, of course, to Batman's kind of blind rage he had mm-hmm. as well. Can you tell me, did this make more sense than Batman's blind rage? Well, no, not necessarily. Okay. I think both of their blind rages didn't make any sense to me. The fact they're both too rational of people, too educated, too smart to let let this let this hatred blind all of their brains. Although I do, this one made a little more sense to me in that he actually took that fight to fruition. Uh-huh. He didn't cave. Yeah, he's like, what? Even though he was fighting for a stupid reason. I, he didn't. He didn't cave. It he, was, he stuck with it. I mean, I, I get it. I kind of questioned it when I saw it, but it's blind rage. Okay, you're standing in front of the guy, and you just learned out this guy killed your parents. Except that you already know he had been forced to do it in a way that he. And didn't you know even, what Tony said? Says I don't care. Yeah, but that doesn't make any sense. He was filled with rage. I get that. I get it's ridiculous. It's I ridiculous. get it. But at some at some level, I understand it. I don't. I think it's ridiculous. Because he wasn't thinking... You're trying to think logically. That's like blaming an assassin for the death of your spouse or your whoever. Exactly. If somebody's paid to kill... The person who's paid to do it is okay. not the one you have the rage okay. against. It's the person who made so them let, do let's it. Let's break it down like this, okay? 
you find out your spouse is cheating on you or something like that. You should be mad at your spouse. Exactly. And people aren't mad at their but spouse. But that doesn't make any sense to it me. It doesn't make any sense, but that's the world we live in. I, that's what, I, I don't understand that. People are just... I've never understood when people are in a cheating situation that they get mad at the mistress instead of their spouse. You don't have any relationship with the mistress. There's no reason to be mad at them. They are a pawn in your spouse's game. Bucky was a pawn in the game. And I think that Iron Man is too smart. Exactly. To but he's the one, you know, he's the one that pulled the trigger. He's the one that bashed his dad's skull in. You know, he's the so. one that did it. And it doesn't make a sense from a logical standpoint. It doesn't. But he just learned that two seconds ago, you know. So all he was filled with his gut reaction, his gut rage. Mm -hmm. And I, to I totally agree. It should have happened, you know what? But then, of course, he comes to find out that Steve has been lying to him. That Steve, while didn't know it was Winter Soldier, Steve never told him that Hydra killed his parents either. So he felt kind of betrayed by Steve as well. And I just think Iron Man, I think he felt as like, a character, is I think too he also kind of felt a bit of betrayal by Steve because I think he felt like Steve and him were closer than maybe they were because he was, you know, he he felt like if he and he and Steve were close, he would have told him that information ahead of time. And, you know, that feeds into the line where he was like, he's my friend. I was like, so was I, you know, or maybe we weren't. I never really bought that Cap and Iron Man were like super BFFs, though. I don't think the movies ever portrayed that. And no, even in this film earlier on, you know, Iron Man's all like, you know, I hated you growing up. Oh, you, yeah. My dad and thought that, you were again, so great. That's another reason that fuels his rage because he's been so jealous of Steve exactly. his whole life. That's just another fuel to the fire to for the end fight sequence. Mm -hmm. I just don't buy it. And again, it's one of those things too where, yeah, Winter Soldier is a killer and, you know, Cap's defending him and Tony thinks that's the wrong thing to do. And that's why at the end he tells him to drop the shield because he didn't deserve it. Mm -hmm. I totally get I totally get I get the logical standpoint. I can just, I can just see where it's coming from. Doesn't mean I'm right. I'm probably not, of course, because much of my life I'm never right. But... Um, I can see the, the, the standpoint. I'm just I, saying, it, goes, it under, goes against Iron Man's character. I understand this blind rage better than I do certain other movies. I just don't, I don't, I think... Because, I'm sorry, if, if the person in front of me that had killed my parents was standing right in front of me and I just learned it, he's dead. Yeah, but you're not Iron Man. You're not Tony Stark. I'm a That's human. That's my point. I'm a human. I should react the same way he does. It doesn't matter if I'm a genius or not. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 you're trying to think from a logical standpoint, okay? He's fueled by feelings. We all have feelings. Yeah, he's have... not fueled by feelings, though. He lives his life based on his brain. Bullshit! You don't think so? Look at his ego. Well, yeah, his ego. His That's ego different. has been, uh, which is... But it's based on how smart he is. Exactly, but everything he did in this film, too, was based on his feelings, about how it affected his... Okay, his, I, his I, I, I agree with you there. He definitely, in this movie, you could see a little bit of a breakdown in his normal persona. Exactly, and that, again, that kind of... I just don't see that it, character. It came to a vo to volcanic this. eruption at the end of this film. I guess. I just don't buy it. Fine, no, but I totally get. It. I, I, again, I'm gonna say that I could be stretching, and I totally get why people have a problem with it. I'm not 100 on board with it, but I'd say about 80 percent on board with it. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, you know, I got, I'm, I'm there. I mean, I liked the fight. I enjoyed the fight. I'm glad that they did fight. I just thought that, like I said, Zemo's plan I thought was incredibly flawed, and I, I was, still don't think it was I, necessary. I'm, I'm gonna give him credit and say it was incredibly articulate and masterful. Because, again, like I said, he's special forces. He knows plans don't go exactly how he wants, so you got to divert. And he's got to have lots of options. If something didn't go his way, he's got to go the other way. And that's what I think. All right. All right. And I, I get disagree. Most people don't agree with me. I, I get it. Most people don't agree with me. So, again, let's go to this one criticism as well when it comes to Zemo. Do you think he could have gotten into that cell with Bucky logically? I mean... Because one of the criticisms is that, you know, if they had hired this doctor to go interrogate Bucky, that someone, you know, would have known what he looked like. And when Zemo showed up, they would have said something. And, you know, he never would have gotten that far uh, and that close to Bucky. Uh, I know. I mean, I, I think it was reasonable that he could have done that. I think it's reasonable because really all, you know... This, it's not likely that anybody at the German facility would have ever met this particular psychiatrist. Exactly. They said the UN was sending him. Yeah. They didn't say that the that the people there had summoned him. Mm -hmm. I mean, all that I mean, really, Zemo all really would have had to done was put, known, put his picture over that guy's over that badge. Guy's badge. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's I think what that, I say. I, I think it's reasonable that he could have infiltrated in that in that respect. 
Um, I mean, he, he, he obviously was trying to plan. I mean, I, I do think there was a lot of variables, like the fact that he had just happened to be building an EMP, expecting that this was going to happen in Germany. Like, uh-huh. what? why did he know? How did he know that they were going to take Bucky to Germany, to Berlin when they found him? Like, how did they know he, that was going to happen? He, that, he I didn't think, know that. That's what people were saying, too. It was like, how he, did, he had to have known that because he already had that EMP in route. But how long did... No, not in route, not already. It was already the shipping company already had I mean, he, it. I mean, he probably, like I said, the guy in the truck was in there as they were taking Bucky. Right. Okay? That's my point. I get that. Okay. So how did he but know? All he had to know, all he had to know, was where they were taking him before they got there. You know what I'm saying he could have an overnight delivery, you know, and got it to Germany. Oh, Jack, took, well, he was in Berlin. His hotel was in Berlin. Was it in Berlin? Yeah. You sure? The lady speaking to him was speaking German, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I, I could be wrong. I don't know. I'm pretty sure I'll, he was I'll, in if it Berlin. Is, if it is, I'll give you that plot. I'm, I'm almost 100% sure his hotel was in Berlin, that he was building that EMP in the bathroom of his hotel. Uh-huh, which was in Berlin. Which was in Berlin. I don't know. They need to go back. I need to so go. I'm not 100% sure. Again, we'll go I back. I mean, we'll the, UN, the UN building, was that in Berlin? It was in Vienna. It was in Vienna. Vienna, yes. Okay, so the UN was in Vienna. Apparently, this this place where they took Bucky and Cap was in Berlin. The hotel, I th- maybe it was in yeah. Vienna. I don't know was speak, in, it was in speak. Berlin. I know I know they took him to Berlin. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, I know Bucky I'm just was questioning where Zemo's hotel was. I mean, it was either in Vienna or it was in Berlin. No. Yeah. So, but how did he know that they were going to take Bucky? Because that EMP would have already had to have it packaged, had a shipping destination. So he would have already had to have known which power station powered the facility that Bucky was going to be held at uh-huh. to know where to send the EMP so that it would arrive at the exact time he was questioning Bucky. I mean, come on. It's a little far-fetched. Not really. Not oh, a- my God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But you're, ta- you're talking in, in spaces of time, okay? And that's kind of what we're talking about as far as time. How long did it take him to get from point A to point B? How long did it take him to get from Vienna to Berlin? Or how long How long did it take for yeah, the package to be But if you think about it, that's what I'm saying. The package was already in that truck. That guy was already on his way to deliver it when so, the caravan so how, drove Bucky so how into long did, there. So they were in where wherever Bucky was. He, I don't know where Bucky was when they captured Bucharest. him. Bucharest. Bucharest. How long did it take him to get from Bucharest to Germany? And can that can he then take that package and get it <coughs> to, to Berlin in the same amount of time? Is really what we're talking about. I don't know. I think he could. I just think it's far fetched. UPS has overnight delivery. Okay, sorry. I just think it's far fetched. I, I, I totally agree. And again, I'm stretching here. I'll totally agree. Yeah. People have a problem with it. That's great. But for my, um, what I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I think the film was entertaining. I'm not like dry. I'm not trying to say that these. Oh, I, I know, and I, I don't want to detracted from and, me. And, it and, didn't. And I'm not trying to say the film is flawless. I'm not saying, oh, it's ridiculous. It was perfect. No, it's not. Okay. I totally get where you're coming from. I, you know, my suspension of disbelief, though. Mm-hmm. I don't Which, care about yeah, that. Exactly. It's fine. I'm just saying the, the, ras- the rational, logical person in me. Finds flaws in it. And it's I, like I, I said, the one thing that made me so irritated was when they were talking about Rhodey's injury, and Tony says that it was the the was the uh, was fractured from oh, whatever yes. it was yes. L seven to S one. There is no freaking S one vertebrae. Come on, like get it right. <laughs> yes, yes. It doesn't even course. exist. Like yes. seriously, it's like basic medical knowledge. If you're going to talk about a spinal fracture, they didn't consult, you can't even refer to the right vertebrae. They didn't consult a doctor on that. I guess. That's ridiculous. Right? right? Of course. So okay. All right. Um, the other two characters we could have talked about, but really don't. There's uh, um, William Hurt comes back uh, as Ross. First time we've seen him since the uh, Incredible Hulk. Yeah, he whatever. Was a typical you know, soldier whatever. man. And then of course we see Martin Freeman uh, mm-hmm. coming as Everett K. Ross, which he is the Wakandan ambassador. So he's probably going to be back for Black Panther. Mm-hmm. We'll see more of that character. Again, I'm of the uh, the mindset. I'd love to see Benedict Cumberbatch come Doctor Strange meet. Um, Martin Freeman as Everett Ross. So you could see, you know, Watson and Holmes in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Probably won't happen, but it'd be fun to see yeah. in that instance. So, all right, guys. Well, that is it, I That's guess. That's it. We're just, we're just going, we're not talking about anything else. That's what, all. what else do you want to talk about? I don't know. I felt like I had some things to say. I mean, that's what I wanted. I figured we'd go down by each character. We can talk about, you know, we, I think we hit on all the major stuff. I mean, we hit on the, the fight sequence and the plot holes and all that other stuff. I mean, I can't really think of anything else to talk about. Um... Really, that's why I wanted to go character by character to make sure we didn't miss anything. All right, that's fine. Okay, so, yeah, so the next Marvel movie we get is Doctor Strange in November. Then we get, uh, Spider-Man comes out, I'm 
pretty sure. There's like Guardians of the Galaxy 2 comes out. We get like four or five movies before they like Infinity War. Oh, I remember something else I want to talk about that okay. bothered me about this film. Okay. So when Ross comes to their place and he's showing them the video and talking about headquarters yeah how all these bad things that happen and i did read the thing that you share where they were talking about the conspicuous lack of mention of pietro yeah which i totally agree like because especially when he's there at the table telling them that they didn't even care about what happened when wanda lost her twin brother there like i feel like if that was me i would have been like what the fuck do you know about yeah. how we feel about what happened like and nobody <laughs> said anything like, come on. But then also, in addition to that, when they're talking about, um, he when he's saying, do you know where Banner and Thor are? Oh, yes. If I I've... lost two nukes, I'd have to talk about it. Number one, Thor has no obligation to report. He's in to, Asgard. He, exactly. There is no reason that the Avengers need to know. He's a human. He's a, he's he's a, a god. god. He has no... There is no reason. He doesn't report to shit I'd like, anyone. I'd like to see Ross like, try to They're going to get him sign yeah. the accords. Okay. Right. I'd like to see Ross try to ring in That's Thor. what I'm saying. So, like, him trying to say, do you know where Thor and Hulk are? Like, if I lost my well, nukes, you think I have to course. report? Like, like they owe... Like, Thor owes them anything. If he no, wants to come and help he's out, not, he He's can. not a part of this at all, He doesn't no. have to. He's worrying about the bigger picture, like yeah. the galaxy. Okay, buddy? Exactly. Like, there is... I just thought... And the fact that, again, nobody in that room said anything like that group of people i just don't see that they would have sat there and just taken it when ross was there spouting all that you guys don't care about anything yeah you don't care about these lives you don't i mean wanda and the minute that that thing ex that she was trying to save all those people on the ground mm -hmm. and as a result killed people in a building innocence innocence regardless People that were innocent would have died. She was trying to protect one group and as a result, killed others. She was, no matter what, people would have died. Yeah. So, and she was immediately devastated by that. So the fact that he could stand there and say that to the group, that they don't care about the repercussions and not one person at the table, well, I been think, like, you don't know what you're talking about. I think uh, with Wanda, I think she's... She, no, she, I she don't think she wouldn't have said anything. Wouldn't have I think anything. anybody who would have said anything would have been Cap, and Black Na Widow. Natasha, or Falcon. Yeah, I just, I could not believe that Black Widow... Sat there and took Sat there and Because, took well, again, in this movie, we see her be more timid where she's mm -hmm. going more along with the Accords. Yeah, and I just... I th that's, that scene bothered me a lot. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe it's just because I would have been again, like, but, you are a okay, fucking idiot. But let's remember, too... you need to get out of here. Let's remember, at the end of the scene, Natasha's like, well, what happens if we don't go along with it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but still... Like, I totally agree with that, yeah. But, of course, you got to think of Ross, too, where mm -hmm. it's like... You know what? He, he wants to know where Banner is because he hates Banner. Right. I agree with that. But, like, I know. For them to not say anything about, like, look, Thor has... I mean, come on. I, get, I agree with that, yeah. I mean, somebody should have said something. And Cap kind of, you know, spoke up. was like, okay, that's enough. Yeah, but, but that yeah, was it. That I mean, was... He, he got pretty far into it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I agree with it. I, I, I get what you're saying. You know, we, we have that strong of characters, you know? Yes. It's like when, you know, when we have store meetings at work... You know the people who are going to speak out because they're the most strong-willed people, of course. So, you know, like, you know, I'm sure your meetings, you just talk all the time. So, <laughs> see how I got that there? Whatever. Okay. All right, guys. Um, anything else you want to talk about with the uh, movie? I don't think so. I can't. And again, so, again, right I think what we're saying, guys, is the film is highly entertaining, but it does have its flaws. Okay? Mm -hmm. As much as, you know, I try to defend it, I'm not saying it's a perfect film. I think it's, you know, it's a... It's very entertaining. Uh, I think. I mean, I really liked it. I mean, I know okay. I, I'm so, speaking kind so of negatively about so it, but I, I really so liked it overall. I was in, highly entertained. Let's get into it then. Um, where does it fall on your ranking of Marvel Studio films? Mm. Let me go first. Yeah. Okay. Is there like a website I can look at real quick that has all of them listed? Uh, you should be able to go to IMDb. Just type in Marvel Studio films, and it should give you a list of them. Okay. Okay. All right. So for me, I don't know. The more I think about it, at first. After a second time, I'm thinking I'm going to put this at number three. I might have to put it maybe number four or five. What I'm going to do is sit down and I think think about it quite a bit. I'll give my list of all the movies, of all the Marvel Cinematic movies. As of right now, I'm going to say number three. I might put it number four or five. It's definitely in my top five. I'll definitely give it in my top five. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure. Three, it was highly entertaining. It had its issues, but what Marvel film doesn't? 
Well, what um, film doesn't? Exactly. No um, number two, I'm still sticking with the Avengers. Um, just that movie alone, I was like in awe of it. Okay, this, it was the culmination of what Marvel Studios had set out to do with Iron Man and bringing these film franchises together. They literally took the comic book universe and brought it to the big screen, a cinematic universe. They took Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, who all had their own titles, and then brought them together in this one title, The Avengers. They literally made movies into a comic book. And since then, everyone has tried to replicate that. Uh, DC's trying it. It's, you know, Universal is trying it with their monsters. Sony's trying to do something with Men in Black and 21 Jump Street. Lord knows what the hell that's going to be. Um, but it's a it's it has changed modern films, I think, really with Avengers because they all the other studios have seen the success of the Avengers and said, "Hey, we want that success too." Kind of like with Star Wars or even the Matrix. In far as far as storytelling and technology, people saw that as a game changer, and I still see the Avengers as a game changer. Plus, it's just a hell of a fun film. Yes. It's got a bunch of jokes in it, but it's got some great adventure in it as well. And it's just an entertaining film. And that's why we go to the movies, to be entertained, okay? Yeah, I want to. I like those films where I can sit and think and, you know, expand on the meaning of life and the, the human condition. But most movies, a lot of us, we just want to go to be entertained, to forget life for two hours, three hours. So, um, And then my number one Marvel film, Captain America, Winter Soldier. Still my favorite Marvel Studio film. Probably my favorite comic book film and one of my favorite films. The reason I like this over Civil War is because it, it was a smaller film. In this film, it really was, like I said, Avengers 2.5. And with Captain America Winter Soldier, it was a much smaller film. It was definitely Captain America a movie. You had Black Widow and Falcon kind of as his supporting cast. And really, that was kind of it. Then you had your villains. It was a much smaller film. And so you got to explore the characters a little bit more. Um, Kevin Smith on his uh, Fat Man on Batman podcast said he loves watching a Captain America film because it's almost like now he's watching a you know Jack Ryan by John Grissom film except for the guys carrying a shield on his back and I can see the comparison because these Captain America films are very much espionage style films and that's what the Russo brothers did with Winter Soldier they turned the genre and created their own subgenre within it and that's phenomenal um, the Winter Soldier it's going to be hard for anyone to beat that film for me as far as comic book films or even Marvel Studio films because every time I watch that film, I'm just amazed by it. I love it so much. So, All right, I'm done. You ready? Okay, um, Okay, I think I'm ready. Okay, just like I said, tell me where Civil War falls if it's not in your top three and then give me your it's, top three. It's not in my top three. Okay, where would you put it? Um, I, don't, I don't know. Okay, would it be in your top five, top ten? Uh, maybe in my top five. Okay, maybe your top five. Okay, so then now, so if it's not there, give me your top three. Still, um, I think my top three. I think my number one is the original Avengers. I really, huh? I, I still, I really like the original Avengers movie. Huh? Um, but I think my other, I, my my top five, I think probably are this one, that Civil War, and I'm and this is in no particular order because I really haven't had time to put this out. But the other ones I think that I like the best are Thor, the original Thor. Mm -hmm. I really yeah, like Yeah, that's a good Thor. film. i definitely probably put that in my top yeah, five. Yeah, I love the original Thor. So it's in my top five. Um, Ant-Man. I really enjoyed Ant-Man. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Hey, do you want to go by Deadpool? I did okay. want to go by Deadpool, Okay, yes. we'll do that too. Oh, yeah. wait, does that count? Uh -huh. that's no, that's, 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 no, that's, that's, that's separate. That's separate. Yeah, no, so Maybe I think my that. top five include the Avengers, Captain America Civil War, Thor... Um, Guardians of the Galaxy and Ant Man, and Ooh. and my other one that I have like on the fence is the original Iron Man. So <laughs> I love how you say Guardians of the Galaxy because Griffey hates Guardians of the Galaxy. I love Guardians of the he Galaxy. He hates it because it's he feels like it's the the beginning of the downfall fall of the Marvel universe because everything since then has kind of spawned from that with becoming so jokey. He feels. I like the jokes. But whatever, I don't care. I mean, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. I like uh, it. Different films, I think, are supposed to do different things. Mm -hmm. Like I just said, some movies are supposed to make us think. Some movies are supposed, supposed to entertain us. Mm -hmm. So, Some movies do both, if they're really good films. Like I said, The Winter Soldier. This film maybe made us 
think less than uh, some people would like, but it was still a damn good ride. All right, guys. Well, we have definitely run over our usual time. And like I said, good thing I didn't bring up the other topics because I knew we were going to spend this whole time talking about Civil War because it's a film that both Lisa and I were very anxious to, wa to uh, watch and talk about. And Josh was supposed to be here, so I'm only imagining how long it would have been if <laughs> he would have been here as well to give his opinions on stuff. But I think we're going to cut it for now because we've got stuff to do and the day is getting away from us. So, any final thoughts? Anything, Lisa? Nope. Okay. So there we go. All right, guys. So if you have any questions, comments, uh, want to, please tell us what you think, actually, too. We want to know your thoughts on Civil War as well. Um, tell us, you know, how much you liked it. For the most part, I think most people enjoyed it. A few people didn't. But overall, um, you know, let us know. Dayspringdiscussion.gmail.com. Hit us up. Also on social media, we have our Facebook group and Twitter account, which I ignore. I know. I'm sorry. Um, but then you can hit me up on Twitter or Instagram, Slim Dayspring. That's S L Y M Dayspring 12. At, and that's it. Um, so until next time, guys, I guess I have to say bye.